All right, guys, we are live. The Shooter's Mindset, episode 82. Thanks for interruption early there, Dustin. Well done. Uh, we're here with the co-host, uh, Jennifer Seymour is in the house. What's going on, Jennifer? Hey, guys. And we got uh, Dustin Plouffe in the house. Come on. What's up? Just making sure that everything's a finely oiled machine. He let his presence be known early. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then we got the guys of the hour here. We got uh, Ruben and Ryan from Vortex Optics. What's going on, Ryan and Ruben? Hey guys. We got to get them to talk up a little bit. They're a little bit quiet bunch. We were doing a lot of. Uh, uh, we'll we'll save the pictures that we were showing in the videos for later, but we'll we'll, we'll get it kind of going here. Someone responded, "No, they are not going to watch tonight's show just now on Google Plus." <laughs> Thanks, you. Block engineer. Yeah. Well, we don't want you to watch. Ask. <laughs> yeah. Don't enter the giveaway either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's probably what's gonna happen. They'll just enter the giveaway. But uh, I want to remind you guys of the the Q and A section in the bottom left hand corner. If you got any questions uh, for any of us here on the panel tonight, be sure to use the Q and A app in the bottom left hand corner, or you can go over to the Shooters Mindset Facebook page, where you would see a post where you can ask uh, post your questions below that post. And there will also be a giveaway link uh, posted here shortly where you guys can get into the giveaway, which we'll announce here in a second. Uh, but for those who are unfamiliar with Vortex Optics and what you guys do at Vortex, tell us a little bit more about the company and what you guys' role is over there. Well, um, Vortex Optics is a veteran-owned family-operated company out of south-central Wisconsin. Currently have about 140 employees. Um, we do all of the design, engineering, testing, quality control, um, repair, sales, and uh, on our higher end stuff like our razor series of scopes, we do a lot of the uh, assembly and manufacturing. So make any, everything from spotting scopes to rifle scopes to binoculars um, for really everything from birding to, to long range shooting to three gun to deer hunting. So you guys are like pretty much the jack of all trades over there at Vortex, pretty much. That's what it sounds like to me. So you guys are anything. You you guys are fixing the scopes. You guys are uh, obviously you guys are you know sales personnel. So you guys know all the specs and how, you know every in and out of the product. So these are the guys you're probably going to call or email and ask or see at the shows. We saw Ruben a ton. The Vortex booth was just smashed at at the 2015 Shot Show. So it was even hard to get a, a few words in with some of these guys. But there you go. I mean, so this is a good a good time to get your live questions in because these guys are going to know uh, the ins and outs of these optics. And for those of you guys who have some techie questions, this might be a good time to ask those to get them through. But uh, Jennifer, what's new on your side? I know you've been shooting a lot of matches. I don't know if you shot any major ones, but you've been shooting some local stuff. What's going on over there? I've been doing some local ones, trying to work on speed. Got to shoot out 500 yards for the first time ever. That was really fun. Um, not in a match, just going out and training with somebody that knows what they're doing long range. So that was fun, but just kind of getting ready. Yeah. Uh, Dustin, what's going on? I know you did the the Costa course, so you were excited about that. Indeed, yeah. I got uh, teamed up with uh, a whole bunch of people and went out to a Chris Costa course here in Missouri. And uh, it was the carbine course, so a lot of shooting a lot of rifle, shot coming up on two, about 2,000 rounds of rifle and I got some pistol in there too, so couldn't leave that one out. But uh, great, great course. I'll have some uh, video and some pictures up later on and, and uh, info on how to get to uh, one of his. So might have to make my way out to Wyoming to do some of his long distance crazy, crazy stuff. So uh, um, that was a blast. And then uh, gearing up for the NRA show for Animal Customs. So getting that all squared away. And then life. Just uh, bought a house. So. Yay! That's a big. That's a big move. Man. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big deal. Well, five five hundred yards. I mean, how how long did it take you to hit that target? Uh, once I got it dialed in, it was about three four shots. Uh, to figure out exactly how the hell to do that, but uh, really the little techniques that he showed and and did everything, it it got dialed in where I was hitting you know grouping just hundred two hundred yard shots in a you know, a quarter size group of, you know, five to ten shots. So What? I don't believe you. Yeah, it happened. Costa will prove it. <laughs> right. Video or it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, he got video of Costa at Chipotle, but we're not gonna go too far into the Costa joint, even though Costa does 
does do uh, Vortex Optics, so he was rocking them at, at uh, I believe, at the training with Dustin, so he's a fan of cool. Vortex himself. Will do. This is your first sneak peek. Somebody, somebody's going to screen cap this. But look, there it is. Now I'm getting text messages, so don't read that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, there's the beard the, yeah. and the luscious lips of the Costa. Jeez. Just saying oh, everything's right. going to be okay. Yeah. And taxi. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's let's move on here. Remember, the Q and A is going live right now. We got some. Uh, just gonna start off here with the questions here. Show sponsors today is uh, as always. We got Fort Mill Munitions. That's Team FMM .com. If you any of you guys buying factory ammo or you want some reloaded stuff to your spec, uh, go check out uh, Fort Mill Munitions. I have a discount code with them. It's TSM five. Get you five percent off any of the ammunition purchases there. Just got done shooting a state match. I was using their 124 grain hollow points. They ran 100%. So if you guys are looking for some great ammo, check them out. And we also got uh, Brett Russo. He's always been a big supporter of the show since day one, so we always slide him in here. Uh, very supportive dude. So there we have it. Uh, we got the Q&A rolling, and let's let's go ahead and start firing away here. Some questions here. Um, we got the, the Vortex Razor HD 106 optic is highly used amongst three, three gunners. I mean... Probably one of the most uh, hot, most used optics in three gun. What makes the what makes it the go to optic? So what do you think attracts everybody? What why is it the top used scope right now, in your guys' opinion? Well, <clears throat> one to six has gotten big on uh, the three gun scene a few years ago. I remember the first time I saw one. I was at Rock Castle Pro Am, and um, it was a Suaro, and it was beautiful and absurdly expensive. And so when the 1 to 6 Razor came out, it came out at a price point that was more affordable than the Suaro. And then it came with features that, that better the Suaro. The wider apparent field of view, um, edge to edge clarity was better. Uh, most folks do argue that its resolution and sharpness is um, at least on par, if not a, a little bit nicer. Um, and, and it is a little heavier, but uh, really it's, it's performance and affordability is what. Uh, is what brought it up. And then the JM1 reticle, which was the first introduction, very intuitive reticle, very easy to use, uh, three-gun minded, obviously, uh, designed by, uh, or in, in conjunction with Jerry Michelak, and it, that's about all there is to it. I mean, it's a simple, rugged optic, and it's it's affordable by, by all means. Yeah, it's, it's bulletproof. I mean, everything we've put it through, and we put it through some pretty serious stuff, and as it, you know, if you've ever gotten behind one, the eye box is extremely forgiving. Um, on one power, it's as effective, if not more effective, than a reflex sight, and uh, you know, daylight bright illumination. Again, the controls are extremely tactile and very, very solid. And then, you know, I think one big thing that it has that a lot of, um, a lot of more scopes on the tactical side of things have the exposed turrets. The Gen 2s don't; they have cap turrets. Um, you know, every, anybody who's shooting three gun knows that when you throw a, a gun in a in a barrel, that's one thing you always worry about. I mean, no matter what, if if they're locking turret or not, it's one of those things you always worry about. Um, I think one of the biggest things, like I said before, but to stress, the the eye box is extremely forgiving, and you know, shooting shooting extremely fast and close uh, can be done with uh, again the effectiveness of of a reflex sight. Yeah, that's well said. I mean, they, I mean, I think what you know, I said a lot of great stuff there. Performance at an affordable price. I think everybody, I mean, every every time I was looking to to scopes, you know, you everybody, you know, a lot of the pros were using the Swaros and the, you know, the Z6 Eyes and those. I don't know what they were like, just under three grand or something like that for that for yeah. that scope. I mean, I, I I can't drop. I can't afford to drop. The, you know, I mean, that's you know, I gotta. You, you know, I get, that's not even layaway ready for me. I can't even put it on layaway and come get it. You know, it's just not going to happen. So, you know, when, you, when you're talking about a scope that's going to get, you know, what, sub-1,500, maybe a little bit less you can find them on the street for, yeah. you know, with something that can, can compete and even beat something that's worth about three grand, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer there. And that's exactly our ethos at Vortex is we build a product at least as good as our competition, a price range out. There you go. I mean, so it, it almost don't make sense to pay the extra dollar if you can get something that's 
you know, that won't won't break the bank, and you can still win with it and keep up with everybody and all the pros. So Ooh. there you go. Then that's part of the reason why it's so popular on the three gun scene and in the carbine scene in general. I know there's a couple Facebook ones that you guys have coming in. You guys want to hit those? All right, Joshua Doss wants to know. He has a lot of questions. He said, uh, how does the development process work for you from beginning to end, and do you have to go through many prototypes? Um, well, I think a big part of the development process is knowing your customers, and um, Vortex has got a, a pretty solid reputation in the industry of having people out you know, at competitions, at training courses. Um, we've got, you know, Ryan and I shoot a lot of three-gun. Um, we have guys that shoot PRS matches. We have guys that are, you know, ex ex military that are out in the in the sniper community. Um, so really, and and a lot of people that are are uh, basically like, I think I think one big thing is like we focus on two different communities really. I mean the tactical community, not only but also the hunting community, which is where a huge portion of you know, the optic market is going. So um, I think the big thing for us is we listen to the customer. Um, once we get an idea that's kind of submitted to us and, you know, if there's a lot of demand for it or uh, if, if we feel like it's a product we want to run with, um, we'll take it and, and kind of start, like, from the inception of it and, you know, having, having a full engineering staff and um, manufacturing capabilities in-house, we can we can get a sample really quick. So I wouldn't say that we go through a lot of samples, but, um, you know, when, when we get something, we decide, you know, first first it's, you know, body, then glass, then, then what type of reticle people want, you know, what type of shooting. I mean, um, like Ryan was saying, the JM1 uh, was built with the three-gunner in mind, but even for, to further that, it was built with the, the carbine shooter in mind. So somebody who's using an AR platform, to shoot targets from five feet to 600 yards, and to do it effectively. So, I think there's a there's a lot of experienced shooters that work every day at Vortex, and then again, we're just we're really in touch with these different communities that we work with to get ideas on uh, on what people are asking for. There you go. Well, is Ryan eating Thin Mints while, he, while he's on? Is he on the show? You got them Girl Scout cookies, son. Oh, baller! <laughs> you didn't even share. Those are my favorite cookie. That's why I was like, is that a thin mint? These are a very important part of the production process at Vortex. Um, it's very important to have a balanced diet. So thin mints and Red Bull, there's a lot of that going on. <laughs> so next uh, next time you, when you, everybody gets their strike, you go, I'm like, is that a, is that a Nutter Butter? What the? Nope, <laughs> thin mint. It's like licking, yeah. licking your glass. I'm like, ah, uh, I've got a big old chocolate smudge on this one. I want, right. a box, yeah, I want a box of Thin Mints in with my Strike uh, Eagle. Call a tube. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, open the box and sprinkle sprinkle cookies in there and close them. <laughs> so that could be your thing. CompTech holsters. I know every time Randy ships me some stuff, I get Smarties, Smarties in yeah. my package. You get a CompTech holster, you get Smarties. You get a Vortex opt. You get some, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the Girl Scout cookie of the day is. You know, Thin Mints. I'm not going to be racist and say, you know, you could get some, you know, coconutties or something, or uh, what's the... We call them the ones up here. Not... Yeah. Yeah, call them what they are. Most of my ideas come from while I'm eating Samoas. Yeah. By the sleeve. Samoas. There. Those are delicious. <laughs> Boom. Nice. <laughs> All right, so I got another one on Facebook. Uh, Joshua says, uh, when the company started in 2004, did you think it would get to be one of the top brands out there after just a few years, uh, and then we kind of explain the rest. So I know, and you kind you already touched on it a little bit. I know I picked up Tyler's from Adam's Arms. His backup optic at a match was a was a Swaro, and it was okay. But the whole time I was like, oh crap! I got a two hundred dollar mount and a three thousand dollar optic. If I trash this, I gotta sell my car. But then I then I then I got a razor on one. And, <laughs> then I threw a razor on it the next day, which is pretty stupid of me to shoot two different optics two different days of the match. But, um, but yeah, I can I can attest to it. So, uh, did you guys think that you're gonna blow up this fast in the industry since since everybody and their brothers run in Vortex? Well, 
it, I mean, that's a tough question. I wasn't there in the inception or the beginning, so I don't want to weigh in on it too much. But um, I know one one thing that the, uh, the owner and his family are, are really key on is is we don't gloat, we don't self promote. Uh, you know, we're not out there to, you know, throw an ad in every gun magazine and, and have a, uh, you know, a five-second uh, preview on every YouTube video. And um, really, I, I guess if I if I had to, to weigh in on it, I'd say that, you know, they didn't anticipate to be the biggest, the best. They just wanted to, to deliver the best and, the, and the, you know, the highest quality product for the money, for the customer. <clears throat> and it was really... It was really the customer base that, that brought us there. So, I mean, you know, you always anticipate on, on being successful and growing and, and, uh, and getting big, but um, we never anticipated that we'd have such a fantastic customer base uh, to get us to where we are. It, it's incredible. I mean, we, all of us can, can attest to it, uh, Ruben, Ruben and I and everybody else on the sales floor, um, how wonderful it is when, when we open up our email inboxes in the morning and, and, and people tell us, you know, hey, thanks for doing a great job. And, and um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. I can I can definitely say that I, I do really appreciate like a family ran or family organized company too because I know Ruben I was standing talking with you at Shot Show and the owner was walking by and she was like, "Do you want a salad? Do you want this? Do you want that?" Like she was like taking lunch orders because if anybody has been to Shot Show or is actually if you've worked at Shot Show uh, in the booth or mini booth, you know that like eating or going to the bathroom or like things you just don't do or you take those sacred <laughs> so uh, for the when the owner of the company to like literally like I'm gonna go get you food so you don't die and you know and shag and stuff when when it, they could just send you know a random peon to go do it that, that's kind of cool and kind of a, a personal touch where you know they're shaking <laughs> hands yeah. you know <laughs> the plebs the gophers. So I think that's a cool touch of a, of a company to do, you know, to do something like that. So. Yeah. I think one thing that, you know, that we do really well and we strive to, you know, it's not like it just happens, but we, we offer our, our VIP warranty with every product that we sell and you'll hear people ask like, well, you know, if, if you would, you know, you wouldn't have to offer a great warranty if, if, you know, you just were confident in your product. And it's like, well, you know, I, I can see where people would say that, but at the same point, like we, you drag it behind your four wheeler on accident, like Jeremy Moore did a couple weeks ago, um, for a half a mile, and it breaks. We replace it. You know, like it's not it's not all about, you know, thinking that your product is going to have a defect from us. It's, you know, we know that life happens. You know, if whether it's a Chris Costa type of guy who's out running classes every week and. Um, drops it on a rock and it breaks, or whether it's you know we've got we've got a whole case of stuff that's come back, you know binoculars that were left on the hood of a truck, or um, a guy that dropped his spotting scope off of a cliff in Montana. You know we're there for the customer when life happens, and I think that's one thing that people appreciate too. Yeah, I want to come back to this warranty stuff because a lot of companies offer you know like this. They call it some like extravagant name, like this, no hassles warranty. But then they're like, well, uh, well, if you drag it behind or you throw it outside the window and you kind of purposely break it, there's obviously no uh, warranty there. But you guys are saying that you know people, you know, have had that mistakenly happen, falling off mountain cliffs and dragging it behind cars and they break. And you know, I don't know why you would do that to optic, but some people just do it for shits. And then all of a sudden you can get a replacement from Vortex. So that's a true, like, no BS type of warranty that you're getting from over the folks at Vortex. So that's really good to hear. So I had a, an issue with, and it wasn't an issue with Vortex, but the it was with the vendor that I didn't get what he said he was getting me anyway. And I, I just called Vortex instead of going back to that vendor. And it was great. They were like, nope, just send it back. We're going to trade it out. I was like, I have a match coming up. You know, I kind of need to, I, I don't have time to ship it, wait for y'all to get it, send me the other one. And they were like, well, just, you know, give me a credit card number just to cover us. They didn't charge it. And they went ahead and shipped me the new scope before they ever got the old scope back. And I mean, it was just like seamless, easy. They were like, no problem. We're going to make it right. We're going to fix it. And like I said, it wasn't an issue with Vortex. It was the issue with the vendor. But it, it just was so easy. 
Man, yeah, man, that's I didn't know they would do something like that. That's you know, because we as shooters, you know, even with jerseys and stuff, we're like, dude, I gotta imagine two weeks. This, it needs to be mm-hmm. here. You know what I mean? And you know, I like. I was like, I've got to get it and get it zeroed, and I've got a match. And yeah, mm-hmm. I had it before. I think a day Wait, after you're I should. You're telling me you don't zero your optic the day of the match? That would just be you, Dustin. <laughs> Apparently, I'm the only one that does that. <laughs> that I'm like, ah, oh, we're. And we're good. All right, we're all right. Live action. Live action. Yeah. Hey, it's real world tactics, okay? That's why I wear this jersey. Yeah. Uh, let's get into the giveaway here. Uh, the winners. Let's go ahead and announce the winners of episode eighty-one, which was featured right as armament. We had their trigger. We had their comp. We had another comp, and we had a hat. So the first winner of that one here is William Friedman. He's going to be the first place winner. And I'll, I'll throw this up on the, sh- the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page just in case any of you guys missed the show tonight. You guys can still see if you want. And then here, let's go to the website. Here we had, uh, his name was Tommy Dang. Tommy Dang. D-A-N-G. Tommy Dang is number two. So you would get the, the comp and the, the Rise Armament hat. So congrats to you guys. I was finally able to get this giveaway announced during the show, not like last time. And then uh, the giveaway for tonight is um, we have a two Vortex Spitfire optics, and that's their 1X Prism Dot uh, sights. So we got two of those guys. That's a it's a nice it's a nice deal right there already in itself. Um, we got uh, Tactical Life uh, from TacticalLife.net. We got their Sure Grips. Those go on. I wear those on uh, the Glock 43. A lot of my pocket, all my concealed carry guns get uh, uh, the sure grips on. Um, let's see. Uh, we got Snag Mag. That's a, cons- that's a If you guys carry a spare mag with you, that's a. It's a magazine holster for your spare mag. So another great product. So we're gonna have two winners. Each of them's gonna get a Vortex uh, optic. One of them's gonna get some sure grips, and the other's gonna get a Snag Mag, and we'll figure that all out. Um, Later on, but we're going to run this one for a week. We're going to run it until the next episode of the Shooter's Mindset, which will be next Wednesday, April 8th, Eastern Time. So I have a chance to select them. We'll announce it during that show uh, next Wednesday, and we'll also have it on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page for those of you guys who just happened to miss the show. Two winners today. That's going to be great. Also, if you get uh, you get bonus entries if you uh, like Vortex on Facebook. If you like their Instagram, we got all their social media stuff. As part of the bonus entries into the into the giveaway link, uh, and a variety of other ways. Dustin's Facebook page is coming up on almost about 900 likes. So once he gets to a thousand, he's having a giveaway. Jennifer has already like 3,000 likes because, you know, that thing just she's blew up quick. I wanted to say yeah, she's a girl, but then I kind of took it back, but <laughs> Dustin caught on to it. I knew so, what you were gonna say. It's no. the same thing everybody like, says. Go ahead. Likes already. Dude. She like started it like four. four yeah, I can't help. I'm better looking than Dustin. That that's true. I try real hard. I got a haircut and everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting yeah. tan. It's getting warm outside, so I'm getting tan again. I'm liking it. All of this. <laughs> you look good. Yeah. Thanks, Ruben. I know. It's right yeah, here. So. I'll see you at NRA show. <laughs> oh man. Max it up at NRA. And you bring those thin mints. That's what I'm saying. You can count it. We got a team down. <laughs> All right. Those, now, those what, do we, what do we have here? Um, Vortex released a handful of new uh, new products this year at SHOT Show, and I don't know if there's any more. I know some people are still waiting. The the hype and the great optic, that very affordable, which is the Strike Eagle 1 to 6. And you also have the Viper and the Venom, which are uh, micro red dots. Is there anything else that you guys... Uh, release that I missed here and can you tell us about these new optics and their features? Well, um, we released a, a new series of binoculars at SHOT Show, but um, not really not really anything uh, to, you know, not really anything more that I know of, um, at least for this year, but the Viper and the Venom were, were big for us because, um, you know, the, the huge influx of, like, optics-ready handguns um, 
you know, now, especially with the Glock MOS, but, you know, the, the core... 10 millimeter, man. I keep, I keep going back to the interview. <laughs> with, uh, yeah. there was a, you know, there's a huge, huge demand for those, and uh, the Viper and the Venom will, will work really well. We designed them uh, so that they'll work with the um, the mounting plates that come with the MOS and the uh, core and the FNX 45. Um, they're, they're both really, really nice optics. Um Obviously, the Strike Eagle has been a big one for us, you know, as far as um, hype this year, and it was a it was a thought out thought out process on that optic, you know, to to really again give the customer with what they're asking for, and uh, that was a you know just everybody that loves the Gen 2 but doesn't want to spend the cash, um, guys that love the Viper PST one to four but um, want a little more magnification. Um, there's a lot of people that, that ran the 1.4 PST and, and wanted a, you know, BDC reticle. So, um, again, we came out with, with something we felt people were asking for. And, uh, you know, at that price level where you can get, um, I mean, it's a serious optic. It's it's not the Gen 2 1 to 6. Um, I think that was something we wanted to clarify, too, with, with people, you know, at SHOT Show. There was a lot of, like, oh, is this going to replace the, the Gen 2 1 to 6? And it's like, well, you know, no. Um but it's also uh, a huge step down in price, so um, you don't ever want to say you get what you pay for. But you know, with Vortex again, we continue the kind of the tradition of, of offering uh, a product at a great price with an awesome um, set of features and, and obviously our, our VIP warranty. So um, <clears throat> I can see a lot of people from anywhere from entry level people who are just getting into the sport. Um, you know, I I personally have have put a lot around see that little scope and have been extremely impressed with it. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, I don't know that it'll replace my Gen 2 1 to 6, but I'll shoot it at a bunch of matches, you know, to prove that it's a serious optic. And I mean it shoots better than I do. So um, yeah. we're we're really excited <laughs> to see how it how it uh, you know how people receive it and, and really, you know, a big thing for for us. Me and Ryan are we shoot a lot of matches, a lot of local club matches and you know, a huge thing about growing in the shooting sports is getting, you know, making the sport more affordable for, for the new shooters and uh, making it, you know, the equipment more intuitive. And on, on our end, the optics end of things, you know, we want to make it as easy as possible, come out with a bulletproof product that, you know, we feel people can, can run and, and add a great price too. So, yeah, we're, we're really excited to see, you know, how the, how the strike angle hits the market. Well, yeah. along those lines, uh, there's some questions, multiple questions on Facebook about um, wanting to know what's the difference between the Strike Eagle and the Razor 1 to 6s besides the price, which is obvious. Um, but like while someone says, why would I want to spend extra on the Razor? Is it more heavy duty, better glass? Like what is the, everybody, multiple people have asked that. Sure. <clears throat> so looking at the two, I, I mean, it, they are very different things. They are not the same scope. Um, and, and they are they are very different. The razor uh, is kind of the, the pinnacle of optical performance and, and design. And the one to six strike eagle we made. You know, you, you go to a match and you see the guy who showed up. Uh, he's maybe wearing some web gear. Uh, maybe he's wearing a booty hat, and he's got a DPMS sporticle. And that is an optic that is for that guy who's looking to get competitive um, in tac ops. Uh, but not break the bank. Get his feet wet into the sport and go with it. So it, it does not have the same glass. It does not have the same coatings. Um, it's extremely rugged, uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't class it against the Razor One to Six because it would be unfair to both optics. Um, you know, the Razor is is the Ferrari. Um, you know, in comparison to uh, to the Impala SS that the Strike Eagle One to Six is still a high speed, low drag scope. Um, it's going to be great for that guy who's stepping into three gun or wanting to step into that uh, that one to six magnification range and compete, uh, you know, as best he can. Um, but it's it's not a razor one to six. We're not marketing it as such. You know, it's not something that we're uh, you know we're trying to pit it against. But, Someone yeah, specifically like, asked, what's the difference between the field of view on the two? Actually, the numbers are very close. If you look at the numbers, they are very close. And, and um, a lot of that lends itself to optical design. Uh, but keep in mind um, the, you know, the, the glass quality, the coating quality. Um, you know, it, there, there will be some differences. 
in the two, but the, the numbers as far as like field of view um, and, and elevation and windage adjustment and, and uh, overall, you know, performance are very similar. But and it's a true one X. Yes. True one X. I mean, yeah, one interesting way to look at field of view is you can have two numbers that are exactly identical. You can have a, you know, 327 foot field of view, but, um, you know, the, the glass on the Gen 2 is going to have um, a better edge to edge clarity. So while you might have the same apparent field of view on both optics, you know, you'll, you'll look up uh, if you had the gun and, and the scope and advice and then you would look at one, you would see that the Gen 2 is going to be clear all the way across, edge to edge, you're not going to have any chromatic aberration, you're not going to have any edge to edge distortion, no fishbowl, um, and that's comparative to the, you know, to the, to the strike eagle. But those are some things that you'll see between the two. We're really excited to see how the reticle works out. Um, I think it's, you know, kind of, kind of what I see is I see three gunners do a lot of the, ultimately a lot of the, uh, vetting of products and then the rest of the market goes out and buy them because buy them they work really well, you know, and, and when you put something like an optic on an AR-15, um, if people see that three gunners are using it and throwing it in barrels and going down to shoot long range and running the mag ring back and forth, uh, if they see that it works, you know, now you'll start to see that show up at courses. I mean, that was one of the, the reasons why Chris Costa started using our stuff is because he saw that in the competition market, it's, it's hard to beat the durability of the Gen 2. And so, you know, what, what's one thing he's looking for? An optic that doesn't fail. And, you know, kind of what competitive shooters do is we prove product and then the rest of the world goes out and buys it for all the, you know, during the during the rush when they went out and bought five or six ARs that they had no use for, but they threw them under their bed. And now they need optics for them. Yeah, I know on his uh, long-distance glass, he was definitely ru running some uh, Vortex optics. So, uh Hopefully I get out to Wyoming and he was going to do some even long distance, you know, real far shooting. So I know he runs a lot of his, uh, Vortex, the, the major class on his stuff. So it's not just the high speed, low drag, you know, one to six, one to fours. So Yeah, he's running uh, some of you know, like Gen 2, 3 to 18 and 4.5 and to 27s. Um, I know that one of his favorite optics from what the guy in our, in our sales office has told me is he really likes the 2.5 to 10 by 32 PST. Um, paired with a little micro red dot on the side. Now, everybody knows if you're running that in, in three gun, you're shooting open. But um, so that kind of makes it undesirable to a lot of guys. But as, as far as like a platform goes, like a 16 or an 18 or a 14.5 AR um, with that pair of optics on it, you know, if you've got a micro red dot offset and then a two and a half to 10 or a two to 12 or a three to 18, something like that. Especially the Viper PSTs are extremely light and really, really rugged. Um, I know those appeal to a lot of the, the operator crowd. Yeah. We love operators. Yeah, we know. Uh, a lot, even the, you know, I think that's where you, you hit gold because you get you get these guys that are, you know, that's always uh, a cloud around three gun. Jennifer did a good video on a YouTube video on the gear that she uses, but. Everybody says, you know, well, three gun. I can't afford it. I can't afford three gun. Period. Like as far as gear, as far as travel, as far as all this stuff. So you come up with this budget optic that kind of gets people to bite, get into the game, get out there shooting with what they got, and now you you hook them, and now those are future future buyers of a better, or you would say the Vrazer or something else from Vortex later on down the line, or they just keep that and rock that. You know what I mean? We uh, even some of the pro guys. Jesse Tischauser said he's running the Strike Eagle on all of his backup guns. You know what I mean? So his backup guns are getting the Strike Eagle, and he's running something else for his main gun or whatever. There's a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of niches where this fits in. And well, I think, definitely. yeah, pre-orders. I know Optics Planet told them some pre-orders for him. Other websites are probably stacked full of pre-orders with this with the Strike yeah. Eagle deal. So talking about the uh, the Tischauser. Of course, he's going to ask about uh, this. Uh, he says, "Is Ryan wearing pants?" So did Jesse ask that? That's what he said. That's what he asked. I am not Jesse. You know that. Hold on. I'm going to give him a nice selfie here. <laughs> is that is that the kilt? That was also no, the question. I'm not wearing a kilt today. I'm just not wearing any pants. I mean. Fischhauser is a uh, a very connoisseur of the bedazzled pants and jeans line, 
So, he, and not only that, but he is the sexiest man in three gun. That is undisputable. I have been saying that. There, there you go. <laughs> that's that's the man. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much it is. I mean, so so hold on. You're sitting there with no pants next to Reuben and eating Thin Mints. Jackpot. Don't drop one, though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drop one, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well said. Uh, we got some... Uh, you want to... You have a Q&A you want, still want to hit there, Dustin, on Facebook, or are you, are you good over there? Uh, no, a lot of it was uh, about the... Strike Go ahead and hit the other stuff. I'll refresh. Okay. Oh. All right. So we got a lot of Strike Eagle hit. It seems to be... The coating is not a because br- three gunners are you're if you're, if you're worried about your stuff getting scratched, I mean, you probably be sh- should take a different sport on because you're going to be <laughs> slamming those things around. So to me, coating is definitely not any type of deal breaker at all. Now, obviously, there's some difference in glass, but the specs are pretty similar. So definitely look into it if you haven't. Um, uh, which is the which group has been the big biggest contributor? to the success of the brand, competitive shooting or hunting, or is it just like the normal consumer who is purely a range junkie? Well, I think that, you know, you could you could say that it was definitely the hunting crowd that, that built it up, that brought the brand uh, to life, um, and it's definitely, uh, definitely keeping us rolling here. Uh, we do build, I guess, more hunting scopes than we do three-gun scopes or precision rifle scopes uh, or anything like that. Um, but the competitive shooting crowd, whether it is action shooting sports or whether it's the precision rifle game, um, anything like that, they are definitely on the rise. I mean, it's no secret you go to a major three-gun match, or even a local three-gun match, and you look around at who's running what in TAC Optics. Most of the time, it's Vortex. I know our local clubs back home, it's, it's the product that works for the best. And it's the product that comes in at the most, you know, affordable price point. And for that, you know, the, the three gun crowd and the uh, the action shooting crowd is definitely catching up. Yeah, I mean, the one thing too is like we, uh, I think, the competitive shooting up here is again, like we were talking earlier, is limited to a very short part of the year compared to what a lot of people do. I mean, I think we hold our last shotgun match sometime in October and. And the first three gun match was a couple of weeks ago, so we have a considerable amount of time where we're, you know, away from the range as far as on the competitive side of things. Um, so that's we're we're able to we we put a lot of time that we're not at the range, you know, into into thinking about new ideas for new products and stuff. But even with the local thing, we have, you know, I when we go home and shoot a match, or if we're shooting locally here in Wisconsin, um, you know, it's it's pretty cool to be able to go and shoot with people, and I think a lot of people like the fact that they can talk to somebody from an optics manufacturer that, that goes and shoots a local club match, and that's something we really try to do, and um, we're going to try doing that here this this year in in, uh, in central Wisconsin. We're directing the three gun at the local club and stuff, so we're really excited to, to be, you know, um, brushing shoulders with local people, asking them what they want, and... and uh, the competitive and the hunting crowd really have a huge piece of input into what goes into our products. November through March, you just need to come south and shoot with us. <laughs> yeah, you guys get to shoot like 11 or 12 months out of the year. You know, we see snow from October to May, so ouch. it's just not fair. It's just not fair. <laughs> yeah. We got a <laughs> question <laughs> over... You shoot all year. Yeah, just imagine. I I'm I'm very lucky to shoot uh, around. You know, there is just sun. It was it was the coldest time I think it got down here, and I was seriously contemplating on not going to this local match because this is how cold I thought it was. Uh, you guys are probably gonna laugh at this, but I think it got into about the the upper 50s, lower 60s, and I was like, too cold outside. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. And they're like, you gotta, come out. Don't you got a hoodie. hoodie. Don't it be a chick. Yeah, I, don't have shot, yeah. I have shot in the 20s. Sometimes it's in the 20s. That's, that's t-shirt different. and shorts weather for us, people who have all the weather. Yeah, no, we were like, and Anthony, you, you have a hoodie. <laughs> Man, I didn't yeah, why come. did you buy a hoodie, Anthony? <laughs> well, I used it when I went up to 
uh, to, uh, up north to shoot it. But yeah, it was it was one of those days, man. I didn't want to go out to my car, man. That was I didn't have the clothes for that. You know. So there we go. I know we got a question on uh, pistol optics. What do you what do you have there? Yep, Mike Bell wants to know uh, what's the life expect expectancy of the little red dots for slide mounted pistols. Has there been an issue with slide mounted optics not being able to handle the cycling action? Well. I mean, from a durability standpoint, actually, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I asked that question the other day because uh, I was looking at building, like, a, a steel challenge gun or, or an open gun, and it's not a field that I've gotten into yet. And actually, one of our, our head R&D guys, um, who, who's probably uh, the most, like, abusive, intensive optics tester I've ever met, uh, said that he has, has noticed over the years that the slide-mounted uh, – Optics are, are outlasting a lot of the frame mounted stuff because they're allowed to move uh, with the mass of the slide, and it's not being you know translated up into the up into the unit itself. Um, and so that's a good question. Uh, we're not seeing any issues with that, really, and we don't foresee any issues with that. You know, some of the testing that we did um, for the new Viper and Venom Red Dot is we took it out and we uh, shot. Well, I did. Um, our our R and D guy did. Uh, shot a whole bunch of three and a half inch turkey loads out of the 12 gauge, like boxes and boxes of them. And, uh, you know, he's very trigger shy now and has an enormous flinch. And uh, there was no there was no issue, which sucks because he's a precision rifle shooter. Uh, there was no issue there. And, and it's, it's really cool to see what these new little optics are able to withstand. Um, so, no, we don't, we don't foresee any issue. Life expectancy is as long as you live. Uh, you know, it'll it'll last as long as you will. And if anything does happen, you know, God forbid, we're gonna back it. So yeah, I heard. Um, I think I think uh, I was talking to an engineer from um, a very reputable handgun manufacturer, and he was telling me that in testing, they found that it's an average of 19, 19 G's or something going rearward, and like ten G's coming forward. Um, but in a obviously it's compacted down into a very short period of time. So it's an immense amount of force being put on the optic. Um, and it's it's pretty impressive to see what the slide mounted stuff can do, especially when you kind of expect that that forward rearward motion would really jar them. Um, they actually are able to, like Ryan was saying, they're able to escape from a lot of that harmonic vibration where if you were using a slide mount like a lot of the guys on the Seymour's are and um, RTSs and RTSs and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool to see, especially in slow motion. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that. I think that's the problem with red dots. I mean, there. I don't think you can get any more of a of, of an R and D testing if you're throwing it on a 12 gauge and it's hold. You know, it's holding up, and you know, obviously holding zero will be another th another thing. Holding zero and holding up on a 12 gauge after box after box after box. There. I mean, it's going to last on a pistol. I mean, you know, there's just way, so much more recoil coming from a shotgun over a pistol slide. Right. So you figured, there you go. So they'll hold up, and if like you said, if it don't, by some miracle, it's backed anyway. I mean, you, can you really go wrong here? You, you really can't. Yeah, I know those Vipers in testing were run on, on 2011s, on, on 1911s, on cores, on, um, on Glocks, on 40s, on 9s, again, on the Versamax, on Sayas, anything and everything we could think to run them on. And, of course, ARs, AR-10s, um, really, you know, you can't run them on every gun, uh, but you can run them on what they're intended for, and it was pretty awesome to see how they held up. Very nice, very nice stuff. You guys, now I'm gonna have to figure out how to like put one on my S. That'd be sick. Just run oh. one on my a micro <laughs> micro nine with a just a micro, a yeah, yeah. You have that yeah. much trouble hitting anything with it? <laughs> no, because it's a Springfield <laughs> and it's black nitrated. <laughs> does your warranty cover JB Weld? It does. Yes, <laughs> yes it does. <laughs> does it cover thin mints? Uh, no, no, it does not cover thin mints. I'm sorry. This company is going downhill. Oh, he's torturing us all with thin mints. <laughs> uh, uh, I do have one on Facebook here. You, you did talk about the uh, the optics and the lens qualities, and uh, and then like the, the coatings. Adam on Facebook asks, uh, how many coatings are on the multi-coated lens? So I guess what's the process of that? Several. 
Multi. Moving on. All right. <laughs> thank you for tuning in, Adam. Um, we we don't talk a lot about our coding processes because they are proprietary. But all air to air surfaces or or glass to air surfaces, excuse me, are multi coded on these. Um, you know, for for the the best light transmission, the best uh, you know protection. Um, for the lenses, but we're going in that, uh, you know, we don't we don't talk about exactly what we do with that because that's the secret sauce. And uh, we already gave away too much with the Razor One to Six. It does have one full unicorn ground up into it. So. Oh snap! You know, this that's thing. crazy. And here I thought it was the thin mints the whole time. Yeah. Oh, on on every optic, we run a uh, run a thin mint on the lens, and then lick it, and then ship it out to you. There it is. Uh, we got George D here comes in with a Q and A here. When is the Strike Eagle due to be out on the market? Sorry if I missed it. I tuned in a couple late, a couple minutes late. So when is it supposed to hit stores and be in the consumer's hands? I think we plan on starting to ship that one out. Um, we'd really like to start getting it out early summer. Um, I think realistic, realistic would be June, July time frame. Um, it's a new product for us, um, so that's. You know, that's one thing, not only because, you know, whenever you introduce a product, you can't just assume that it's going to be the most popular thing on the market and you're going to sell millions of them. Um, so, you know, your initial, um, your initial like, shipments to dealers, um, they're going to start out a little slower, but we've, we've, uh, we've really ramped up production on them to, you know, to get those in the hands of people. Um, I think I look at, like, the, the PST series. You know, the PSTs were... Uh, man, they were they were out of stock. I mean, they still a lot of them still are out of stock. The Viper PSTs, you know, were, were originally about a year after the release date. Um, so we're this will actually be um, one optic that you know if we if we start getting those out to to dealers and consumers um, early summer, that will be one of the one of our fastest release dates on a new product. There you go. So we're talking about summer. Was it June, July on those? Yeah, there you go. So you guys who are on the on those pre-orders, you guys better, you know, I know, I know, you guys have got to be anxious to get get your hands on those, but you guys got a little little bit more to wait, and uh, it should be there. Let's jump into the lightning round here. Lightning round, some quick uh, quick uh, questions here, yes or no type of style. Um, if you guys can only reload on a Lee press or an RCBS press, what are you guys re reloading on? RCBS for life, homie. <laughs> RCBS wins this one. Holy, what's going on here? RCBS three di three shows in a row. Uh, it must be cold up there. I don't know. Yeah. It's a Kristen, uh, Is that the OG? Is he an OG? Yeah. RCBS gangster. Yeah. Yep. RCBS. Um, piston or DI rifles? DI. Is that a real question? Yeah, we, we got to... <laughs> the, uh, who, Are we who, suppressed? <laughs> suppressed? I'll give the piston the win. If it's suppressed, okay. Well, Dan, piston never gets no love. Man, uh, what's up? What's up? Was Kurt watching here? What's going on with no piston love from the Adams Arms guys? I think there was two people who selected. Yeah. Um, we got a uh, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris street fight. Who's winning? Bruce Lee. I gotta go, with Chuck. You would go with Chuck. I did go with Chuck. It's Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. I agree with Bruce Lee here. Uh, Chipotle or Moe's? What? Burrito. Oh, you guys maybe don't have them. You guys got to have Chipotle burrito spots. You guys don't have them up there? We have cheese up here, my friend. We have cheese, and that's it. <laughs> you ever heard of a drive through liquor store? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, we have those. Here. So hold on, hold on. You guys, you guys can't shoot year round. You guys get snow from October to May, and you guys don't have Chipotle's in that state. What's going on? Yeah, we don't talk about it though. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, deuces or quads? It depends on the stage. It depends on. If I'm going to drop shells, I only want to drop one and at least get percent. <laughs> yeah. Yard sale. That's, that's the answer you needed. 
I have child hands, but quads work best. There you go, quads. Uh, zombies outside the house there. Uh, rifle, pistol, or shotgun. What are you guys grabbing to get the job done? Um, my gap. Look at that. There's a Glock. Um, was that, a, was that the Glock 43 or or the Glock 10 millimeter? What what was that? That, that is a. This is the Glock <laughs> 10 millimeter. This is the long slide. Yeah. 40 ammo. There it is. Very nice. That's, That's an exclusive, exclusive look right there. Um, let's see here. What do you have? Um, is it the pistol for both of you guys? Oh yeah. Really nice. Um, Chevy or Ford? I gotta go with Ford. I also drive a Ford. There you go. A nine millimeter or forty-five all day caliber. What are you guys choosing? Come on. Are we going center of mass hits or in the leg count? <laughs> <laughs> um, spray and pray. Shots all day long. I don't know. Spray and <laughs> pray caliber. <laughs> 45. 45. 45 hasn't won in a while. I don't own a 45, but I'll go 45. Really? All right. Uh, domestic, domestic beer. Uh, well, uh, beer, imported or domestic? I don't know, made in America, you know, that's kind of, <laughs> is that even a question? Yeah, I like imported beer, man, I'm sorry to tell you. Imported beer, you know. I like my optics and my gun gear from the U.S., but beer, he, you know, He's kind of Mexican, so it's, okay. he likes yeah. Chipotle. It affects him a little Chipotle, bit. Chipotle, you know, Coronas. <laughs> you do know Coronas made by Anheuser-Busch, right? <laughs> no, I don't know. Just kick, I just kicked <laughs> your puppy real fast. <laughs> I, I was You're told welcome. Multiple, St. Louis drops the I, mic. I was, I was, I was, yeah, I was told it was like Mexican piss in a bottle. I don't know. That's like Dos Equis or something. Or like, uh, what's the yeah. one they have down there? Could be Dos Equis. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. There you go. What? <laughs> All right. Um, Blast for me. I think we had one more. Oh, uh, In and Out Burger or Five Guys Burger Joints? Which one are you guys eating at all day, every day? Five Guys. I can't weigh in on this. I don't know. Five Guys. Five Guys wins it. You know, you didn't eat at one. Everybody's got to eat at one of the two of those. So. I told you, Ruben, about In and Out at Shot Show. That's what you should have just. Ah, so delicious. So I delicious. Love that one. The first time it was really delicious. The second time we went, it was like I don't know, man. I don't. It was there, but it was just something. I maybe maybe the eating out all day in Shot Show just was creeping up on me. Shot Show gets you down a little bit, but it happens. Yeah. There you go. Um, let's see, because we got some questions here uh, that came in. Um, what's your favorite Vortec product, and why that one? So interesting. That's probably hard it's for like you guys to a, answer. Like picking a child, mm -hmm. you go. Just gotta pick one. Well, um, I'm a big fan of the Viper HS two and a half to ten by forty four. Just like a no nonsense, get the job done, hunting optic, general purpose optic. I've got probably a half a dozen of them my, myself on, on several center fire rifles, and and uh, I, I'd probably say that's that's my favorite. Now, Ruben, you got any any favorites over there? Um, it's it's a pretty close match between uh, two and a half to ten thirty two PST and uh, one to six razor. It's a pretty close. I'd say I'd say I'd have to give the edge to the razor, but you can do a lot of cool stuff with the ten power. Yeah. Uh, live question here from Into Deep One: What scope mount would you prefer for the Strike Eagle? On a 14.5 to 18 inch AR-15. I mean, there's plenty of them out there. I just, I assume he's wanting your opinion. Yeah, I mean, we make, um, we paired up with Bobro this year, um, Bobro Engineering for um, our cantilever quick release mount. I think on an AR, um, at least an AR-15, not always on an AR-10, but an AR-15, you should go with a cantilever mount. Probably a two inch offset. Um, Three inch offset if you're a real big lanky guy and you know you've got long arms and uh, collapsible stock. Three inch offset will be better for you. 
Um, but I think a pretty safe bet would be to say go with like a 30 millimeter cantilever mount with a two inch offset. I've got one from Aero Precision. Um, I'm going to be messing around with a little bit this year. I really was drawn to it because of the light weight. Um, but they have Vortex branded mounts too. Um, our cantilever mounts are really solid and they're actually, you know, um, when you get them from us, there's no need to lap them. They're, they're, they're awesome. They're very durable and they're pretty lightweight. So um, I'd say a cantilever mount, two inch offset. And you guys are doing the, you, do you already have the switch views for uh, the uh, Strike Eagle? Yeah, that was one thing early in development. We were, we were like, all right, this scope's a competition scope. Um, people are going to want switch views, so those are actually um, ready to go now. Awesome. So, boom, there you go, guys. You got an optic, you got a mount, and you got a switch view. Done, done, and done. Taking care of your whole, you, you just got to throw it on a rifle and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. What was that? I missed that. I missed that one. You can get your switch view before your scope. So. <laughs> there you go. What MGM and MGM has them for sale right now? Uh, we have them on our website. You can call Ryan or myself or one of the other salespeople at Vortex. We've got them in stock. There you go. So go ahead and get your sw switch view right now for your Strike Eagles. Yeah. You can just play with it in midair and just pretend of the, the quality, the glass yeah. quality. I would recommend so, is holding the mount in one hand. You can get the mount now, yeah. and that's, <laughs> so that's probably... Can I zero my mount, and then the Strike Eagle comes later? Will it work? Is that covered under the VIP one? Yeah. Okay. Only, like Ruben said, only a day before the match, yeah. Okay, the match got it. Yeah. All right. Um, what can we expect from Vortex in 2015? Obviously, NRA shows coming up. Are you guys going to be there? And is there any up-and-coming projects, events that you guys want to talk about? I think there's some cool stuff. Um, swing by the booth. There's definitely going to be some exciting stuff going on at the booth. Um, don't want to do any, anything to spoil anything, but check us out there. Um, maybe maybe uh, visit with some cool people over there. Um, there may be some booth visitors. So, But, uh, yeah, you know, keep, keep your eyes on Vortex. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, We've got, we've got tents. We're going to be at matches all over the country this year. We'll be at um, Pro-Am. We'll be at probably Blue Ridge. Um, we'll be up at Pandemic. Iron Man, we've got uh, Rocky Mountain, I think Ryan's going to be at. So we have matches all over the country. Nordic shotgun match. Um, uh, we'll have a booth at some of the Tar Heel stuff. So check us out out on the range. Um, we've got uh, Scott will be at all the PRS matches this year. So... Really, I mean, between shows, uh, shoots, events, um, Mitchell's got their new TV show coming out. It's actually on tonight, I believe. Um, yeah, it is. Up Lane. That's that's really cool. I saw a lot of a lot of Vortex stuff in the previews for that show. So um, check out Shootout Lane. That's on Sportsman's Channel or Outdoor Network or something like that. <laughs> yeah, a lot, all the other cool stuff going on. And uh, next year is going to be a big year too. Yeah, I believe that's on the. Outdoor outdoorsman channel or something like that. I, I don't have that channel. I gotta like special special order those channels for some weird. It's not my Facebook. Yeah, we'll go check it's it out. Funny. Yeah, you know, the, you know, you have everybody there, so it's gonna be a lot of shooting. We definitely gotta check that out. It's like is that like the first like reality shooter deal? So that's gotta be pretty awesome. You guys gotta support that. There we yeah, go. We got a couple on Facebook. You wanna hit Jenny? Uh, there's one that says, interesting question, it says, what's the next evolution of the Razor for 3-Gun? Is a 1 to 8 in the works? What? Um, is a 1 to 8 in the works? We're always working on cool stuff. <laughs> but, you know, maybe, maybe not. Why limit yourself? Who knows? 1 to 8? People are already asking for more magnification. Jeez. I want a 1 to 27. Make it. Yeah. I'm going to switch to you. Oh, no, no, no. Gosh, you're good. You're trying to hide that. Yeah, you really wanted to keep 1 to 27 on your wraps. <laughs> it shot real good. I saw it real good. We did real good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Any any more Q and A guys want to hit? I'm, I'm yeah. Uh, right up over here. On Facebook, Josh said, uh, "Can we see what you guys got behind you? What's uh, what's what's those little gadgets 
What's those little gadgets? Those little guys right there. What do you got on those? What's your setups for three gun? Oh, yeah. I don't like That's showing right. out my guns, but I will. <laughs> Make an exception today. We saw a couple of them earlier today. I don't know if they're behind there, but. I wasn't told to bring my gun, so I left them at home. There's a couple of goodies. This is a, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor with a 4.5 to 27 on it. Um, we play long range a little bit when we have time. Um, this is a rifle that I've been running for a couple of years now in three gun. It's just an 18 inch build. Um, Nordic Barrel, uh, Lantac, Bolt Carrier Group, and Brake, Razor 1 to 6. Um, it's got the Aero Precision Mount right now and uh, Double Star Stock. Um, there's a couple of shotguns over there, but they're not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys give me a run in open with a. Uh... Oh, snap! Can you black nitride that? I think I can black nitride that. It's the hammer. I found it. It's not mine. Can you put a red dot on that? You could. Oh, I can. Well, uh -huh. yourself. And you can black nitride that. And I can black nitride that? Yep. Yeah. Done. And multi can. <laughs> <laughs> it. Ship it now. Ship it. Run it. Do it. Uh, Do it. Do it. So Tischhauser said, "Just wow, this got weird." Uh, he said, "Where is the next uh, three-gun match in Central Wisconsin?" Um, there is a match in Holman, which is like far western side of the state, which is I think La Crosse would be the closest large city. Um, that's coming up on April 19th, and then there is uh, we'll have our first match of the year here in Madison area on. Uh, May 16th, uh, and then we're doing matches basically every month the rest of the year. Um, I think I, our last match is scheduled probably like uh, probably September, October. But then uh, Ryan and I travel a lot too, plus you know throwing matches around here and stuff. So it gets a little busy, but um, we put on some fun stuff. Nice. Yeah. Let's just get into this giveaway here one more time for those who missed it earlier. And again, the winners from episode 8081 was William uh, Freeman and Tommy Dang. You guys are the winner of uh, of last last week last show's uh, giveaway. This giveaway we have two Vortex uh, Spitfire 1X Prism dots, two of those. So awesome, very generous of the folks at Vortex there. So go check them out. I'm um, also TacticalLife.net throwing in their sure grips and um, Snagmag Snagmag.com has their Spare magazine holster. So we're gonna have two winners. Uh, each of you guys are gonna get an optic and you know sure grips or snag mag. Um, this is gonna last a week from now. So episode 83, we will announce the winners during that show, and we'll also have the winners posted on the Shooters Mindset Facebook page. Bonus likes are awarded for liking Vortex on Facebook page, Vortex's Instagram, Jennifer's Facebook, Dustin's Facebook, and whoever else contributed to the show. Uh, so if you haven't liked them, go check them out. Give them a like and get some bonus entries. Um, that's going to be the giveaway. Um, you can find a link to the giveaway on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page, and we'll have it posted in the comment section as soon as I can get off here if you guys want to wait on it if it's not there already. Um, discount, uh, discount Corner. Uh, we'll throw out some discount codes real quick for those of you guys who are shopping around and maybe need some things. Uh, Tacticallife.net, uh, TSM10. We'll get you 10% off T-shirts, grips, and stickers from TacticalLife.net. Uh, Fort Mill Munitions, that's TeamFMM.com if you guys need ammo. TSM in all caps, 5 behind it. It's TSM5 will get you 5% off any ammo purchases. we got Dewey Rods, that's DeweyRods.com. Cruise Rod 10 gets you 10% off all products on the website, 10% off there, so use it. Um, standard Deviation Arms, if you want Magwell from Dawson, Dawson Magwells, Dawson Sights, uh, AP Customs Gear, they got it all over at uh, Standard Deviation Arms at standarddeviationarms.com. Use TSM5 for 5% off. And anything over at Terran Tactical Innovations. Uh, I just ran their Stoger through a, uh, their Stoger M3000. They usually always did Benelli's. So now you can get uh, your Benelli M2 from there, um, and you can also get the more affordable uh, Stoger M3000 
And if you have one, you can send it in. He'll deck it all out, make it a shredding machine, and you can do that. We got some optics here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was perfect for a second. I know. There you go. Send it. Send it down. And what else do we have? Yeah, Terran Tactical Innovations. If you give them a call, send them an email. That's info at terrantacticalinnovations.com, and you will get 10% off if you mention the Shooter's Mindset sent you. So there you go. Anything on Terran Tactical Innovations. That's Discount Corner. You guys have anything to add? Uh, hit me up if you need something from uh, Animal Customs. I can hook you up there. And also uh, BBI Bullets. And uh, if you need anything uh, Black Nitrided, hit me up. So if you guys need any of those things, let me know on the uh, my Facebook fan page, and I'll get you to the right people and uh, get you the good deals. Could you black nitrate the world? I can, actually, and I hashtagged it. Boom. Dawson Done. is excited about that. <laughs> thin mints. Hashtag Thin Mint Vortex. Make it stream. I will make it one. Hang on. Take it over the internet. <laughs> Thin mint, thin mint, uh, hashtag Thin Mint Vortex is uh, now trending on Twitter. So if people don't open up their Vortex box when they get their brand new Strike Eagle and there's not at least a Thin Mint or a half a Thin Mint in there, I'm just saying they might take up that VIP warranty and be like, I didn't get my Thin Mint and my Strike Eagle. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. a rare commodity. You can't just buy Thin Mints. Okay? It's once a year the little girl comes around and sells them to you. So... Can we partner up? I mean, I can get I can get connections pretty fast. Sponsored so by the Boy Scouts. If we could have like the Girl Scouts and like Vortex, they just go like this. It's like peanut butter and ladies. <laughs> Jeez. Like what? <laughs> peanut butter what? and ladies. Oh, you, you like peanut butter on your ladies? I don't know. <laughs> oh, like really think really think in there. I, was, I thought you were going to say, like, peanut butter and jelly. You came up with, like, peanut butter and ladies. This is hey, off the top saying. of his head. This is not scripted <laughs> at all. This is the stuff he thinks about on the fly, guys. This is kind of getting weird. Um, weird. Let me see. I think I'm pretty much <laughs> done with questions unless you guys have any. Um, let's see. I got one here. I got... Um, let me see. Where is it at? Um, pro your, your products have come highly recommended by folks that are locally, uh, like... From Keltex, Chad Enos uh, from Keltech and Schwell thinks highly of Vortex products. What is it about Vortex that keeps the customers so so supportive? We're here for you. If you buy a Vortex product, you made a promise to invest in us, we're going to make a promise to always stand by you and invest in you. And that's what it is. There you go. Very Ooh. well said. There you go. Anything live you guys want to hit on Facebook? Then we can kind of wrap this one up. That looks like it on my side. On Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Um, well, one cool thing a lot of people don't know about is we uh, we operate a pretty cool blog. Um, I think every other day posts. Um, it's vortexnation.com. Uh, it's a it's a pretty fun blog. There's a lot of stuff that you don't see on Facebook. Um, but Facebook is one of our you know bigger social media outlets. So give us a like and follow us or whatever they do on there. Yeah, so vortexnation.com. Check it out. Let's see. Um, we have one more here um, that I that I looked over here. Is there something or somewhere? This is actually a good question. Where a new where a new shooter can reference to help them identify the reticle they need. Absolutely. I know it can be confusing to some people. Call us up. We're all shooters. Um, we're happy to provide any input we can. Uh, you know, we, we use this product, too, uh, as much as we can so that we can provide an input for you. Um, if you are a new shooter and you've got some questions on whether or not you need to run MOA, whether or not you need to run Miller Lab uh, or a BDC, give us a ring. Uh, it's what we do. Um, so, yeah, 1-800-426-0048, extension 5. Ex extension 5. Ooh. Is that a green extended mag release on that? Or am I seeing things? Or is it yellow? Oh, no, that's green. That's open gun words. Ah, there you go. <laughs> very nice. Very nice rifle displaying here. He's excited about it, it seems. All right. I'm always excited about everything. Yeah, there we go. Uh, excited about Thin Men's, Nordic Tubes, the whole deal. 
Number two. Uh, Brian doesn't know how to ha handle the black tube. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to go ahead and move this one down to shout outs here. Um, so we'll start off with Jennifer. What's the shout outs? Uh, all right. I've got my little list in my head here. We've got uh, Savannah River Armory, who have helped me out tremendously and with a rifle and just a rifle that's doing great. I, like I said, I shot out 500 yards the other day with it, and it was right on target. Perfect. Uh, Shooters of Augusta and Sharpshooters of Augusta also helped me out. And we've got Load Up Ammunition. Uh, they're a local ammunition company here, veteran operated. Um, then I've got, of course, Lucas Oil. We should be getting our stuff this week, hopefully, from them. That'll be good. I love their stuff. It works really well. Samson, uh, the Operation X program, and Tactical Life, and, of course, Shooter's Mindset. There we go. Awesome. We got, I got a brand new Samson DMR mount. It's Me waiting, too. It's waiting for some glass. I'm just saying. Mine too. Yeah. So we got. I need a I little gotta, one to six. I don't have one to six. I need one. Yeah. We got um. Let's see. Uh, 18 inch build. Um, upper that we're looking for some glass, and then we got a nice mount. Dustin, what do you have for uh, shout outs? Uh, shout outs will be as always. Uh, Springfield. Armory, and uh, we can announce it now since everybody's kind of coming into it. Uh, booth number 625 at the NRA show. So if you're out there, uh, hit me up there. Uh, Animal Customs, so if you guys need anything for NRA, better get it in right now. If not, uh, hit me up later, and we can hook you guys up some goodies. Taron Tactical uh, ran his base pads at the Costa class like a baller. And uh, definitely helped me out on some of the little relay races that we did. I didn't have to reload like these other tactical teamies did. But, you know, <laughs> not a big deal. Uh, Comtech uh, holsters, GB2 tactical, dissident arms, BBI bullets, uh, Black Nitride the World, RCA. Uh, Pro Ears, AP Customs, I will be at the AV Rhino booth yeah. as well. That is booth 59. Uh, Comtech booth is 1261. Uh, at that Casa class, I ran all of this sweet Tula Perfecta ammo, probably in the neighborhood of almost 3,000 rounds, and without any zero glitches on my sweet rifle, Black Nitride Bolt. So, uh, X Products, Red Roof Inn, Mr. Greg Skaz with the finest photography out there. He just uh, I just saw some photos from him a little bit ago, and he's in the Smith & Wesson catalog. So if you need some big-time photos, hit that dude up. He's a good buddy of mine, so... And uh, like my page on the Facebooks, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Going to be doing a big giveaway. So, boom. Yeah. Ruben, Ryan, anything you guys want to shout out right now? You go first. Go Vortex. Yeah. I don't know. I like the Vortex booth is uh, 949, correct, sirs? Yes. In fact, it is. <laughs> Geez, Dustin, you really did your research on this NRA thing going on, man. <laughs> Surprising <laughs> us here, man. <laughs> you came prepared. Yeah. I do want to throw a shout out if I could. Go ahead. Vex Optics, Nordic Components, my brothers and teammates in P3 Multigun, and that's it. Everybody else. Jeremy Moore, Shooter Source. Yeah, Sorry. Jeremy Moore, the Shooter Source. Best place on the net to get cool stuff. Man. I'm actually wearing uh, wearing a shirt from the Shooter Source right now. Um, which one is it? The win or lose will not be determined by my gear, which is on the back. So. That is a T.K. Martindale quote, I think. There you go. <laughs> is that the only T.K. Martin <laughs> quote that we can say? I think that's about the only one we can say on air, though. Oh. Well, I got a lot There's of a lot of other ones. ones. I'll tell you about <laughs> it if you want it. Yeah, give us one if you can. No more, no more TK. No, we can't, we can't do them. There are too, too many curse words in it. Um, yeah, that or I just have to like act it out. That I need like a mom. I got some do. That's pretty close. But I need a monster. I need a dip. I need a cigarette. And I need to be working on like eight guns at the same time. That's right. <laughs> tell, tell the story. Can we tell the TK story? We got two minutes. 
Yeah, yeah, we we got we got two minutes. All right, I wasn't there. <laughs> not that ticket. Jump behind the counter. Jump behind the counter. Okay, so I still wasn't there. Oh, okay. But so Nordic got tax track a match like 2012. I think it was 2012. Gunsmith and St. Cloud at the range where the match is held is sitting there working. He's got his pink hammer. He's sitting there tinkering on some guns behind the counter with a locked door to keep people from going behind the counter. DK walks in. He's like, this is this is verbatim what the gunsmith told me. He's like, yeah, I'm just sitting there, and this guy walks in. He goes, hey, I'm now DK Martin. I got to take some guns here. He jumps across the counter and starts. He, he looks over, and he, he actually asked him, do you care if I use your mill? And he's like, no, I guess that's fine. That's fine. You can use the mill. And he worked on people's guns for four hours, and uh, the gunsmith, Stu Austin, Stu's gunsmith, and sat and watched the whole time. That's the story. I love yeah. you some TK. So, I love this you is some a TK. random gunsmith. He just behind the counter. And... Uh, TK is a jack of all trades. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Master of all trades. Yeah. You might, you might see him in a ditch, too. I don't know. Maybe you fighting a cop or something. You, you had a night on the town with TK Martindale. <laughs> we need to get him on the show then. Why haven't we had him part of the Adams Arm show? Uh, he he was supposed to be. Um, I think he was flying back from somewhere, and that's why we had Kurt and Tyler. He's the dude who's like, hey, guess what, TK? You're flying to uh, Arizona tomorrow. Go. That's TK. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The best of or the shooters mindset all stars, and he hasn't even been on it yet. But he would be in the all stars. Yeah, we can put another yeah. one of those together. We'll get him in here. We'll invite him in there with Kurt and the guys, and and Rick Birdsell and all those guys. All right. Uh, shout out to my end. Uh, subscribe to the channel every Wednesday at nine. We have a new episode of the Shooters Mindset, new giveaway, and we do some reviews and some match videos on there. So be sure to hit the subscribe button right under the video you're watching. Also, any email contact you want to contact me, uh, let's see, we have the, the shooters mindset at gmail.com. And I'm going to keep my shout-outs real slim today. I want to give a big shout-out to Rainier Ballistics. Uh, shooting, shooting their bullets this year for 2015. Uh, got about 3,000 loaded up and ready to rock. So there you have it. So Fort Mill Munitions is probably going to be offering, it's not solid, but I'm pretty darn sure it's going to happen. They're going to be offering Rainier Ballistics bullets uh, as part of some of their loads that they're working on. It's probably a competition load they're working on with Rainier. So check out Rainier Ballistics for your bullet needs. And that'll do it. That'll conclude episode 82 of the Shooter's Mindset with Ryan Rubin from Vortex. This was in the works for a while here. We were supposed to have him on like episode 8068, and we finally got him on there. These dudes are busy. You're Thanks not for just watching, guys. The first time. you got to make yourself exclusive. Yep. That's one of the tricks of the trade. <laughs> there it is. I mean, they, they, it was like, I told Ruben twice, do you want to be on? He's like, no, dude, doing this. No, we don't have the gear. Screw it, we'll do it some other time, and we finally got him back on. So there you have it. This hey, but is, it was worth it, right? What's that? It was worth it. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> worth the wait. The anticipation was bubbling up. I mean, Thin Mints, Strike Eagle. I mean, we talked a lot of key pointers here. TK story. We saw, uh, you know, enforced. Yeah, we we didn't. They didn't show them. What we got a lot of good. Wow. Stuff here. Wow. Warranty. You know, drop it off a cliff. It's it's good. They're standing behind you. All right, we're gonna end this one. You can guys. rub them so, mints on it, and yeah. it'll still hold zero. I'm I'm. That's a quote. All right. You can you can <laughs> hold me to it. Hashtag thin mints, vortex is a hashtag today. I'm making it. I'm making it happen. We're out of here. 2016. Thank you guys for watching.